Welcome to an unplanned episode of the Mullet Mustang, supported by Turn 14 Distribution. Our high mileage S197 is, uh, is living up to its price. We have a check engine light on, and we suspect it's related to the cam phasers. Might also be related to the chain tension, the chain guides. We've ordered a complete kit from Ford Racing to change the whole front timing system. It's time to get to work. Just to give you some background on why we have all these parts laid out, that check engine light we threw was for cam timing and, and cam position sensor. We did a bunch of uh, work on it already, changed the cam position sensors, changed the alternator, which apparently when the diode goes bad can throw that code. We've done all that work to get to this point where we've kind of narrowed it down to the phasers or maybe the, the tensioners. Looked into just replacing the phasers from the factory, they're quite expensive. But Ford Racing makes this complete kit, not only changing these phasers, which we'll explain to you as we're installing them, but also with the chains, the tensioners, all kinds of good stuff in this kit for 500 bucks, which we thought that's a steal. We'll just refresh the whole timing system on the front of the engine. Also got us a Conti belt. And while I was researching it, I discovered that the factory water pump, and while we're in there, we might as well change it out, but the factory water pump is known to cavitate and not do terribly well on any kind of modified engine. Even NA modified engines tend to get a little hot and on boosted motors they really get hot because of the water pump. So we've gone with this Edelbrock upgraded pump. Apparently it flows much better because of the design of the the impeller blades here. So this should uh, sort, of, sort of bulletproof us water temp wise should we add boost or big cams or something like that. All right Pete so uh, now that I've explained what we're doing it's time for you to actually do it. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that always the case? <laughs> Often it seems to work that way. Y yes, indeed. Step one appears to be removing the intake system. Actually, step one should be uh, disconnecting the battery. Ah, yeah, the old battery disconnect, which you've done already. Yeah. All right, it looks like we're starting with uh, pulling the coil packs out. Yeah, and I've already gone ahead and moved most of the wiring harness in this area. So we're kind of free of that. We have access to the valve cover and most of the front of the engine there so what I'm gonna do is oh yeah there's enough sand in here holy cow see that look at all that sand you're going straight into the spark plug area ha all right time to pull the valve cover bolts there are way too many of them eight millimeter for those of you who care and yeah there are a whole bunch of them aren't there yeah the top side's gonna be easy it's the uh the bottom here that I'm gonna struggle with by the looks of it. This is V8 life. You got more of everything. I know. Well, these bolts are actually kind of handy. If you look at them, they don't come out of the uh, the valve cover, so you're not gonna lose any of the uh, the rubber grommets or the bolts themselves. I really like that. Yeah. And it was a bit of a pain to get at the ones on the lower side. Oh wait. Oh wait, I was close to taking it off, and let me guess, there's one on the back side here, because I can feel it doesn't want to come off. Alright, take two. It's tight. It's close. <laughs> you got it. And, uh, this is hitting here. Just keep coming forward a little by little. Oh, yeah, I'm trying. Try harder, The Pete. dipstick is really in the way. I think we, we need to loosen the dipstick. Yeah? Um, yeah. I feel like I'm going to break something here. It's just a small little eight mil down right here. To loosen the dipstick? Yeah. Okay. Now that it's loose, it should give me plenty more room to, there you go. Slide this sucker out. Look oh, at yeah. that. Made all the difference. This here is our cam phaser, and it's a part of the cam variable timing system. So there's the sensor. It reads off of these pickups. And what we've read online is that this actually, this part here, can actually come apart in two, which is what is the typical failure on it. Um, we're not gonna know that until we actually take this apart, but first, that means we gotta take the front timing cover off. So that's gonna be almost next on our list here. We're gonna do the other side before we get to the front timing cover. There's this cooling overflow tank here. I'm gonna move it out of the way. 
just because I want some more space. I've gone ahead and plugged the outlet with the nipple. So we'll leave it there. And now you can see we've got access to a bunch of the sensors that I need to unplug first. It's always with the wiring harness. You gotta deal with that. And then you can move on to taking everything else off. So Pete's uh, unplugging the main loom to the ECU here uh, because it's such a big heavy duty harness as you can see that it's uh, gonna make it really hard to get the valve cover off so yeah we figure it's better to move it out of the way this time I'm being proactive that's right not reactive in my work Ugh. so what are the odds that this is gonna come off I am betting the upper rat hose is gonna be a problem here yeah I give you 50 50 at best here yeah so here we go. Oh, maybe not. Oh. Well, we have some interference in the back here, but... Oh, oh baby. Look at that. Look at that. The Mustang is cooperating. It most certainly is, yeah. Look at that. All right. All good? Second valve cover off. Well, cam phaser is still there. Hasn't fallen off the motor. That's a good sign. If you're just doing your cam phasers or your timing equipment. Uh, you're not gonna need to remove the radiator, but because we're doing the water pump as well, we've gotta drain it. And we decided because we're draining it, we might as well remove it to give us some space to get at the crank pulley. So that's what I'm gonna do next. And I've already gone ahead and drained some of the coolant out of the rad. And this line here, however, I feel is going to have the bulk of the coolant from the engine that's going to want to surge out. Yeah. Yes, it does. Oh no. My bucket is so close to not being where it's supposed to be. Oh, there you go. There we go. The sound of that draining makes me want to pee, Pete. Well, it does. Uh, our radiator <laughs> coolant looks like it's the color of pee, too, isn't like it? It's, yeah. yeah, it's, it's urine funny. coming out of there. It's, See, it's a good thing we're changing this out. Old man There's Mustang. There's a lot of, yeah. You this bladder this, this Mustang, here, right? you know, uh, it looks like it's been well maintained. I'm not going to say it has, you know? Well, changing coolant is not high on most people's list. All right, so to remove the rad, you got to disconnect this wiring for the fan. Which I've already done. Okay. Now, take the upper rad hose off here. Come on, click. There you go. See, they've got these nice clamps here that are supposed to lock if you squeeze them properly, but of course, my pliers aren't cooperating here, and I can't seem to get them to, to work for me. See, there we go. You gotta be careful though, man, because these things, when they pop, they pop and they end your fingers fast. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know. Hey Pete, stop making so much noise. I think they have uh, tools in 2016 that don't make this much noise, but I had to pull this one out of retirement because I'm getting a little tired of turning a wrench. Ooh, that feels good. That sound though, horrible. Okay, so we've discovered the condenser for the AC is bolted to the radiator, so we're just unbolting that. Yeah, so this job went just from being uh, easy to now becoming well, a little bit more Slightly painful. more annoying. It's only well, two bolts. I, I know, but it's more parts to remove. Yeah, and they're a little bit rusty, but yeah. anyway, it's coming out. It's getting there. can't really see what you're doing, Pete, but... Uh, just trust just us. Just imagine there's a bolt in here that holds the condenser to the rod. And we are removing it. You'll be good. The disappointment is high here. The fan has to come off. Or so I think. Pete's not a fan of the fan having to come no, off. No, why would the fan have to come off? Usually the fan comes off with the radiator. But it looks like the fan has to come off in order to loosen another bracket down there. Disconnect another bracket that allows He's not a the fan radiator. of Ford's fan engineering. That's what he's saying here. Pop off here, right? What can I say? I've never had to remove so many auxiliary pieces to take 
Get your radiator out. I'm a newbie when it comes to the Ford stuff. So that was a lot of whining for like two bolts, as far as I can tell. Is that kind of what happened there? Uh, Maybe a third bolt? No. Oh, I gotta get past this. Oh, look at that. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I did whine and complain about that a little too much. That was pretty easy. <laughs> that was actually super easy. We'll take that back. We'll take it back, Ford. You did a good job on that. All right, so I fought more with the condenser because there's two lower brackets that hold it on quite tight, but once you get them out, this should slowly come up, as you can still see, running into problems here because the condenser line Oh, yeah. It's so close to the rad, and you don't want to push down there too diff too hard. You know what? I think I'm going to have to pull that lower stud. Yeah. Because otherwise I risk poking a hole in the condenser, and we definitely don't want to do that. No, I need my EC, bro. Yeah. See? I need the luxuries. Here we were talking about how easy this was going to be. I mean, I could try to pull it through, but you know what? I'm not going to chance it. No. no, thank you. Well, Pete's under there fighting with a, a bracket. I'll give you a little tour of the engine bay. You're probably wondering why it's so dirty. And it's actually not dirt as much as it is undercoating. Because here in Canada, we get severe winters. And part of the undercoating treatment is usually to spray an oil-like goo in the engine bay and other places where rust can form. So. And then the dirt sticks to that, that oily rust proofing, so you end up with this kind of mucky mess. Really tempting to wipe it all off and get the car clean looking because realistically we're probably not going to winter drive this car, so at some point I think we'll give it a good cleaning. Now, we can finally remove the radiator. Let me show you here, you see these studs here? Yeah. Yeah. Huge pain in the ass. There would hold the condenser over on the bottom side. Yep. And um, this side didn't do so well. It's so rusted. I couldn't turn it. So I decided, well, you just got to break it. Break it off. Sometimes that's the answer. Well, we're not reusing this rat anyway, so do we care? No. But you should. If you're reusing your radiator, you don't have to sit there and fight with this. Hopefully, you're in a warm climate where rust doesn't occur and this little stud will screw right out. And screw right off. Damn you, rust. Damn you. Well, Pete's removing the OE rad hoses because we've got a little treat for our Mustang. We'll show you in a minute. And you can also see how much space we have to work on the front of the engine bay now that the rad's out. Got a massive access here, so We'll be able to get to the crank pulley bolt without any issues. Be able to pull the front cover off. Definitely like makes life easier. Time to remove the serpentine belt, which means... It's time to get back to, uh, yeah, the engine here. That radiator took a bit of time, but now one long belt is that, and as you can see, it was pretty simple to remove. Next up here, we're going to remove the power steering pump. PT's been reduced to the old school non-ratcheting wrench here because there's not enough space yeah, for a gear wrench. can't fit anything, thankfully. I'm super close to being able to actually turn this by hand, but... If it wasn't covered in rust and corrosion, you probably could get it off by yeah. hand. Yeah. There we oh. go. Now the bolts are falling off, of course, because they don't want to come out, but... Our, powering st our power steering pump... It's kind of loose. You can leave it hanging there. And obviously the reason we have to disconnect it at all is because it's bolted to that front cover that we have to remove to get at the timing chain and all that good stuff. We should have loosened these four bolts prior to taking off the belt because now this spins freely. Thankfully, modern technology comes and rescues us today just like that. There we go, and that's all the pulleys. 
Except now we gotta deal with the big boy. You gotta remember where those go, Pete. Uh, I feel like I know where they go. We've got it on video, don't we? That's true, we do have it on video. So, effort number one to remove crank bolt. Impact gun. Electric. See how she goes. My craftsman is good. Let's see if she, how good she is. Nope. You, know, you know why? I got the small battery on. Oh, go for the big battery. The, the, the other battery's charging, so we're going to the pneumatic. Let's do it. You know, we do have a lot of air tools in the garage here, but I never seem to use them. I don't know why. However, they do come in handy. It's just the hose is a pain to deal with. Yeah, you're right. Let's see, here we go. Yeah. Oh, oh, damn. Eastwood, baby. Money coming shot. Coming through right there. Look at that. Well, we're learning the hard way pulling this crank pulley off the motor is not easy on these motors this is our second tool the first one was a bit too big and really couldn't position it on the pulley in a useful way went and picked this one up from Canadian Tire for 30 bucks hoping it'll fit better so far I'm skeptical at best you and me both no it's just slipping off it's slipping off that side damn it mother mother problem we're having right now is this is what the regular pulley clamp grabber whatever you want to call it looks like it's too tall to get behind the actual uh, crank pulley so I'm grinding it down probably affecting structural integrity by a little bit but not enough and hopefully this thing will help us pull it apart because right now it doesn't fit Pete's feeling pretty good about his uh, tool modifications here so let's see how this goes what I'm not feeling good about is how flimsy the, uh, the construction are. of this thing is. Yeah. But I feel like the tool is going to break before the pulley comes off. But Whoa, DP! Is it moving? Oh, it is moving! Hallelujah! Holy cow! Look at that! It's a miracle! Time to pull the water pump. I feel like it may need... A little persuasion. Bit. And I know you should never knock the pulley with a hammer, but we're not using this thing ever again. Oh. <laughs> See, good thing I had the bucket going. So the front cover is held on by a bunch of bolts, including four along the leading edge of the pole. Sorry, including four along the leading edge of the oil pan under here. I'm just so anxious to, look, to work. He can't help himself. There we go. All right. So now we can uh, move to the top. All right. Looks good and greasy under here. Oh, there is one sensor here that I need to unplug by the looks of it, yeah. I think that's for... Uh, the C pump? No, crank timing. Oh, that's a crank position, okay. Yeah. I'm wondering, do we need to remember the order of these? Or the the order of these bolts? Well, we do have video of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm going to mark them real quick. Okay. It's never a bad idea. Yeah, okay. that's a good idea. It's going all Roman numeral on it. Yeah. Why not, right? We've also got these studs that hold the, the front cover on that the uh, some of the accessories mount onto. Yeah, so there's six of these, two here, two on the other bank, and then... Uh, two small guys here that I'm, I've just removed. So that's kind of what they look like. Oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's looking, oh okay. yeah, this is looking good. I felt it move, PT. Oh yeah. I'm not talking about the cover. Oh, getting that happy over this. Look at this, oh! Something fell out. Well, I will show you in a moment. Okay, there's, there's our timing cover. Yeah. But, you see this here? This is a very common problem. Look it. Oh wow. Broken guide. That so this is our, be our a, problem. a timing chain guide that is broken and uh, usually a, a culprit of probably what we've been hearing. Yeah. Let me see if I can, I can't get it out of there. Why would they make a timing chain guide out of plastic? Well, because they're wear items, so they don't want to make them out of metal. 
so they have something to, to wear on. But the problem is they're constantly um, exposed to oil. And when they, over 10, 15 years, they just become brittle. And then they break. Like these, these things are just not very good. Yeah, I mean, it's the same problem I've seen in, uh, in 2000 generation era BMWs. They have the exact same problem. Hmm. So yeah, but this is a good sign. So we see all this wonderfulness broken here. Oh yeah. Yeah. More goodies. Well, now, now we're uh, we're pretty happy we did this, right, Dave? Well, we definitely found the problem, and I'm glad I ordered that that kit from Ford Racing rather than just the sp the, the phasers. Why are we pulling the plugs, PT? And why is this job such a famous nightmare on this motor? Yeah. So we're uh, pulling the plugs because we need to find top dead center, and. This job is a nightmare because, let me grab a spark plug here. These wonderful OEM Motocraft spark plugs are a two-piece design. And they tend to break in half if they've been over-torqued. Or if you decide to ream it yeah. and try to pull it out. So that's why I've got a torque wrench on the actual spark plug here. And it's set to 33 foot-pounds, which is what the recommended TSB uh, recall letter says. And what you got to do is... Uh, there it goes. Okay, so now it's moved just a tiny bit. So I'm going to continue to move it a quarter inch. And now you go back, tighten it up, loosen, and you grab some of your favorite... PB Blaster, or in my case, WD-40. Give it a spray down there. Let it soak. Let it soak. And get back in there. And this one's already actually pretty loose. I'm hitting a whole bunch of stuff. So now I'm going to add my wonderful extension. So I can kind of make this job a little bit easier. But I've kind of passed the point where it's going to break. It's nice and loose. So I'm going to back the spark plug out and thank goodness this is seven of eight so we're close to completing this job without breaking any of these and if you Hallelujah. do break one there, there's some specialty tool you have oh yeah yeah it. yeah there's a specialty tool that you're gonna have to purchase and you really don't want to get into that because by the looks of it look at this yeah there's like six, seven pages on how to extract this thing properly. Like, look at that diagram. Nightmare. Nobody yeah. wants to see something like that. So breaking spark plugs in an engine is a disaster. So be careful when you're extracting them. Here's our getaway of finding top dead center. We literally put a screwdriver in cylinder number one. And as you can see, as the piston goes up to top dead center, the screwdriver goes with it. The question is, are we on the compression stroke or not? Uh, so what I think we're going to do, just to be safe, is you see these marks? Yeah, we'll go around we and mark the, the marks line up. We need to get the marks to line up there, and then the uh, the lower... Yep, we'll see where we are on the, the crank Timing well. mark on the crank will line up as well. So yep. this could take a while. But you can see this. See the flap? Yeah. So with the guide in place, it's much tighter. Now with this gone, yep. that's kind of our problem. Definitely. We're actually pretty lucky we didn't skip a tooth or two. Yeah. We'll or we may have and we don't even know it. Yeah. So we'll find out here. Uh, we've set the timing on the lower crankshaft here to top dead center. On the gears, it's not. So, as you can see here, it seems like it's off half a tooth on both sides. So this side as well here, it's off. Nevertheless, what we're going to end up doing is putting it back to the proper way. We've got the official manual that we looked up online and it shows that it's supposed to be in the center of that timing mark. So we're gonna work with that. In order to take the timing chain off, what you're gonna wanna do is remove the tensioner. And then you're supposed to pry it out or that can happen. <laughs> and now the guide is loose. So you can also remove the guide and you want to repeat that on the other side. Just removing what's left of the uh, timing chain guides here. Not much of this one, that's for sure. That one is a goner. Now we remove the chain here. 
Flip that around. You should hopefully come off somewhat easy. There you go. Slide that off. That's one. And let's see if I can get two off here. There you go. If you're going to use a normal ratchet here, you want to make sure you lock the cam off which we'll show you how to do in a second, but I'm just gonna use the gun to blast this cam phaser off. And then I'm going to just take it off like that. Ours look to be in good shape, but we're replacing them anyways. Here's our new cam phaser. As you can see, it's got a little dowel that I need to line up with the bottom of the camshaft there, so you really can't screw this up when you're putting it back together. There it goes, it's on. Now, I'll take the bolt and slide it in finger tight. Worth mentioning that these are a single use bolt, so this kit came with the bolt that we're using here. We've gone ahead and put a vice grip on the back side of the camshaft. So Dave's gonna hold this side so I'm gonna to torque this to 30 foot-pounds. There we go. And now, the factory service manual calls for another 90 degrees, so quarter turn. So Dave's gotta hold on to this tight, and I just gotta add another quarter turn. And I'm only gonna go an eighth because we already did another quarter on it, but the camera turned off, so believe us when we say we gotta go from here, all the way to here after you've torqued it to 30 pounds. The first step to installing everything back together is to put the timing chain guides in and they torque to a whopping 89 inch pounds, which is gonna be nothing almost. Uh, let's see here. There you go. Normally you do this on the engine, but I'm gonna cheat it a bit. This is the timing mark, and that's the link mark on the right side of the bank. So I figure this is the easier way to put it on. Oh, my glove's stuck. <laughs> there you go. So if you recall, our problem was last time, this timed link was off by one. So now it looks like we're on. I'm gonna put the tensioner guides on next. These are a pretty easy fit, just like that. And on the other side, this is a brand new chain tensioner, so it actually is already compressed down. Um, if you're reusing yours, you can put it in a vise, press it down, and then kind of build a tool like this that holds this in place. And you need to have the tensioner compressed because when you go put it on, if it's not compressed, it's not gonna fit. What I'm running into here is there's a bunch of tension right now. This chain doesn't have enough slack. So what I'm gonna do is use the wrench here just to give just a little bit of slack on the chain to get this guy to go in. There we go. These get tightened to 18 foot-pounds or 216 inch-pounds. Now this is a precaution, what I always like to do, and that is to rotate the entire assembly after you finish putting the timing back together to see if you're all in time, if everything's working properly. You can see tensors are taking up the slack and we'll rotate this around a bunch of times until we're back to top dead center again. Upon further inspection, we've noticed that a lot of the plastic guide that broke is missing. And there's really only one place it could have gone in the oil pan. Yeah, and that meant we had to actually take all the timing equipment off. So we're kind of back to where we started for a bit, huh? Back, I don't want to say back to square one, but we're back to redoing all that timing stuff, which was a giant pain in the ass, so I'm not looking forward to doing that again, but this is the cost of doing it right. 